nearly all of those patients are having decreased production of thyroid hormones because the sign of the signal that comes from the brain uh, in order to stimulate the, the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones uh, this signal is decreased as the blood flow is not normal to the range of uh, so-called ischemic penumbra which is insufficient to cause irreversible damage if the blood flow is at that is at that level you will have decreased the levels of uh, the hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland to produce uh, its own hormones. Mm -hmm. That is a condition called hypothyroidism. And if you have decreased the production of uh, thyroid hormones, the, the respiratory centers will not respond to apnea test. That's the second reason why the respiratory centers cannot respond to apnea test. So, those patients are not receiving proper, updated, uh, timely treatment. Uh, patients having hypothyroidism uh, will have uh, uh, increased uh, brain edema. I mean, the, the brain will increase in size and it will cause further increase in intracranial pressure. That means that the uh, the blood vessels will be further compressed by the presence of hypothyroidism. And if you don't treat hypothyroidism in these patients, you cannot uh, uh, have the uh, regression of brain edema. You cannot save those lives. Another issue is that exactly for the same reason, because you have uh, partially decreased blood pressure and, and blood uh, flow to the brain. Uh, you, have, you may also have decreased production, production of uh, the, the hormone that uh, stimulates the, uh, another gland that is called adrenal gland. And without uh, uh, adrenal hormones, you will have low blood pressure mm -hmm. and the patient will die if you don't replace those hormones. So you have two little conditions, which is hypothyroidism and uh, uh, adrenal failure in patients who are in deep coma, for example, as a consequence of uh, severe head trauma. Mm -hmm. Two uh, conditions that would be lethal if they were isolated and not treated, mm -hmm. and yet they are associated in the same person. Mm -hmm. So you have two lethal conditions that are left untreated in patients uh, with severe head trauma, and those patients, instead of receiving proper treatment, these patients are uh, uh, submitted to apnea tests sometimes once or twice uh, to make sure that they are brain dead. Yeah. But and by doing this, they are inducing death in patients that could be recovered okay. to normal life. That's mm -hmm. very important. We are not talking about recovering to uh, yeah, a vegetative state. Yeah, we are calling. We are talking about mm -hmm. recovering to normal life. To a normal life. Mm -hmm. Yes. But why don't they change the criteria of brain death when they all know that? Uh, from, from 2000 to now, do they know that? But why don't they change it? Yes, uh, uh, we have been asking those, that question in uh, uh, medical websites, mm -hmm. like, like in the British Medical Journal website. Mm -hmm. And uh, the answers that uh, we got simply surprises us. They don't know. No, uh, they say that they cannot uh, avoid. Uh, they, they cannot avoid doing a nail test because if the patients breathe breathes mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in the operating room, mm -hmm. that would be a disaster mm -hmm. for the transplant surgeon mm -hmm. because it would be crystal clear that the, that patient was alive, but at the, by the time when the, their organs, his organs were uh, retire, uh, uh, 
But, but uh, if they did say... Taken away. Yeah, uh, but if they but did the, say... The, uh, the reason why they are performing the apnea test is because uh, uh, in no culture uh, all over the world a patient who is able to breathe can be considered dead. So they say that they have to test those patients for their ability to breathe because taking them to the operating room. What is the conclusion with the abnormal test? What, what shall doctors do now? Well, uh, the worst thing about that is the worst thing about that is that uh, uh, most uh, doctors don't know about what we are discussing here. So that's why it's so important for you uh, to uh, take these discussions to the general public because then the medical people. doctors will have to, to be updated about the, uh, the physiological issues uh, related to, uh, to coma. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they would understand that by inducing apnea test for up to 10 minutes, they are killing patients uh, in order to make sure that they are dead. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that but because they are taught that it's this legal. is the pro legal procedure to be done. Yes. We, uh, we have uh, told uh, those things to uh, those who support the transplantation system mm -hmm. and uh, we got no answers. Mm -hmm. We simply got no answers. Once, in an international meeting, a, a neurologist told me that uh, there is no problem about performing apnea test because he said uh, he knew in advance that the patient was already dead. But this is nonsense because the test is a diagnostic test. How can he have the diagnosis in advance if he is about to perform the test to diagnose brain death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's it's the only problem. answer that I got. Yes. It, it induces that. Mm -hmm. Induces that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I repeat what I said before. Uh, by uh, performing the apnea test, we are killing patients in order to make sure that they are dead. Uh, the apnea test is performed without the consent of the family. And we know that some of those patients, this is, is being published in the medical literature, we know that some of those patients uh, may have cardiac arrest during, irreversible cardiac arrest during the test. Mm -hmm. Because the test is so aggressive mm -hmm. to them, uh, what about to the heart function. But when you, when you do that test on a patient for the diagnosis of brain death, you are not uh, uh, anticipating any benefit to that patient. Mm -hmm. He had only the risks of the, of the tests. He will not have any benefit from that test. And that's why uh, all those diagnostic tests, including especially the apnea tests, uh, are, are unethical. There is no possible benefit for the patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is being denied uh, proper, uh, updated, uh, timely treatment. If you uh, want to perform a test on your relative, which is defenseless because he is in coma, so you have to give permission to that. And if you have to be, to, to give permission to that, you have to be informed about the risks and the benefits. And then the doctor will have to tell you honestly that there is no benefit and there is a lot of risks. And you have to sign it that you accept that. If you do that, if you, if, if you are properly informed, you would not sign because there is no benefit. And you now know that your relative is not receiving proper treatment.